Okay, well, um, here we are again. Uh, I made a little bit of notes for myself, so you might see me looking down at those. Um, welcome back. Thank you for tuning in again. Um, and I, before I talk about what I want to talk about in this video, which is how I got into so much student loan debt and how much was it really when it was at the point where I got serious about paying it off because it was a lot and a couple years ago was when I actually got started. I'm not just getting started paying it off. Um, but before I get into the story of, oh my gosh, how did, how did you get into that much debt, lady? Um, I wanted to share, I was reviewing the video I posted with my low by rules, so called, um, and it wasn't really as true to myself as I wish it was because in that low by rules setup, uh, I numerous times said things like I was giving myself permission to buy something or there were kind of ways to get around and buy stuff. Anyway, I felt like um, when I watched that, I felt like I was hearing myself say, you know, I get to buy stuff, I get to buy stuff. and. That's not how I actually am. I'm not itching to go shopping. Uh, I don't really do that. Um, so I kind of wanted to figure out what was that about? Like, for me, I consider myself a minimalist and I have a very simple lifestyle and a very um, small space that I occupy. Um, why was I so concerned about having permission to get stuff? Um, yeah, so examples of me being pretty simple. Um, my life fits in this room that you see right here. Um, it's not very big. Um, there's like a window and some double doors over here. Uh, how do we point that? <laughs> anyway, um, it's a small room. Um, that stack of shelves behind my head, that's my entire wardrobe. Um, and in this room, let's see, we got to do it that way. Like, so there's a closet. Yeah, uh huh. Except that you can kind of see there's a desk in it. Um, the closet is my office. <laughs> the shelf behind me, that's my wardrobe. Um, my life fits in this room. And I also have a, a bicycle in the garage and I have some camping gear and outdoor sports equipment that I keep in the back of my vehicle. And that's it. That's my life. Um, so I don't want more. Plus, if I did, I don't have any place for it. Um, and so I was thinking about how impulse buys have been a problem for me, but they're usually impulse buys of snacks, not things that I acquire. Um, and this is what I wanted out of starting a YouTube channel was that I have to explain myself and I have to look at what I've said and uh, figure out if it's honestly a reflection of who I am. Um, and what I realized was when I'm making an impulse buy, it's usually not about the thing itself, um, except pork rinds, because pork rinds are amazing. <laughs> no, uh, it's usually not about the actual thing itself. Um, it's often the fact that I'm, I'm pursuing a feeling. I want to feel like what I think it feels like to not worry about money, to not think about the cost of every last shred of everything that I need to buy. Um, I'm looking for a feeling of being sufficient, having sufficient finances. Um, and the interesting thing about finally looking at the impulse and figuring out what am I actually after is that I realize my behavior doesn't serve that at all. My behavior is making my financial situation worse. And in the last week, um, it worked. <laughs> um, I, I didn't feel like buying anything. Uh, at all, which was awesome. So yay, thanks YouTube and a little self-reflection. Um, so I want to offer, if you struggle with impulses, impulse buys, um, try to figure out what you're actually after. Are you really after that thing? Maybe you are, that's fine. People want things and buy things. Maybe that thing is what you actually want, but if it isn't, figure out what you're actually trying to get. I was trying to get a feeling and buying things actually won't give me that feeling. If you figure out what you're actually trying to get, then you can ask yourself, is there a way to do that that's friendlier to my wallet? 
So, my 10 cents. Um, but today, the actual story, the actual topic is how bad is my debt? Bad. <laughs> um, but it used to be so much worse. <laughs> um, today, I logged into my loan websites. There are two that I currently deal with. Um, and I checked and added up what is the actual balance that I owe right now. Um, and it is $46,438. No, $46,438.87. Um, and that's enough. <laughs> Talk about sufficiency, right? Um, that's a lot, but it is way better than it was once. Um, I would like to invite you to time travel with me a little and go back to how I acquired that debt and how I got started um, facing it. Um, yeah, we're going to go back to 2005. <laughs> It feels like a really long time ago. I graduated college in 2005 and I had used loans to fund the whole thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> what? Um, I'm not sure how much I borrowed. I, I'm actually not sure how much I borrowed. Um, when I graduated, I made payments for a few months and then I entered a volunteering program where I could defer the loans. So um, I don't know what the full balance was at that time. I am not sure where I could look to go find out what I had initially owed. Um, because then those loans have changed who holds the loans a few times and it's very confusing and stressful. But um, yeah, I entered a program where I didn't have to make payments for a while. And then when that program ended, I had actually decided to go to grad school and I had applied and been accepted. So I went straight into grad school and my loans continued to be deferred. I did not know that that meant that the interest on them was compounding away all the time. Uh, I was very financially ignorant at the time, something that I am trying to fix every day <laughs> uh, since then. Um, but at that time, I really didn't understand what I was setting myself up to face later. Um, yeah. So I was in grad school then. Um, I was in a program that was three years of coursework and one year of internship. So it was a four-year program. Um, and I finished that and graduated in 2011. And I went to Washington and started working. Um, and after a few months, I mean... I got kind of established. I think they really started showing up, you know, right at six months after graduation. You know, there's that grace period. Grace period. Sure. You don't know what grace is. Um, the loan payment requests really started stacking up. I lived in this little apartment and I started to dread going to check the mail because um, here came a collection thing and it was $200. Well, that seems like a reasonable payment. And then three days later, another one shows up and it's $300. And then a couple days later, another one shows up and it's $100. And after a while, I had all these loan payment requests stacking up and they added up to close to two thirds of my income. And that was terrifying. And that was really stressful. Um, and so after a couple months of that and just stressed out to the max and just like, what, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> um, I got a consolidation loan and, and that was a genuine, enormous relief. I mean, yeah, it's so hard. Like, do you remember that? If you've, if you've moved well beyond the graduation and get established times, like I, I was alone. I was in a new state. I was in a new career and I didn't really know what the fuck was happening with my money. Um, but that all these loan payments had to happen. Yeah. Oof. Duh. Not, not so fun. Um, so I got this consolidation loan and I went with an income based repayment plan. Uh, and it was a relief. Um, while I got my feet under me, um, I, I just set the payment to come out of my bank each month when it was due this small payment that they wanted. It was something around $200. 
And I assumed, okay, I'm making a payment. That must be making some kind of progress on the debt. And I said it and forget it and tried to get the rest of my life figured out, uh, like you do. And I wish that I had understood this sooner. Of course, I wish I'd understood all of this sooner, but you understand it when you understand it. And that's when you get started. Um, so if I can help you understand it and get started, I hope so. Um, that payment was not even covering the interest on my loans. So every month I was paying around $200, but the balance I still owed was growing. And it was growing by more than $200. Um, I would make a payment and then the next month, my balance was larger uh, by more than $200, but I wasn't looking at that. I didn't realize that was happening. Um, and that was going on for several years, several years. Um, yeah, gosh, like, could you time, could we time travel for real? <laughs> could I take the knowledge I now have and go back to then at least? Anyway, um, I was in that career for close to five years and came to understand that it was not really suited to me. I was not really suited to it. So I decided to change. I had been too stressed out. Um, so I really sort of radically downshifted, downsized my life. And that's when I would say that I fully blossomed as a minimalist, um, even though I've always had these tendencies towards simplicity and um, definitely letting go of things that I'm not going to use anymore. Um, in that career transition, I checked in on my finances and I realized what was happening and that I owed significantly more money then than I had when I graduated um, to the tune of like 30,000 extra dollars like compounding interest is not your friend it is not your friend um, and that was around June of 2017 uh, around June of 2017 I, I saw the light I had my moment of clarity and knew that I need to do something about this and while it was awful to realize that I had this enormous responsibility that I did not realize was even worse than I knew, um, it was also really empowering at that time. Like I, I was lucky in that by making a change in my career, um, I felt really good because I knew that I was doing the right thing for myself. And in that kind of more empowered mindset, I was taking on dealing with my debt. And I'm grateful for that because to this day, I remain in that empowered mindset of my life is mine and only I can deal with what I've got to deal with. And, um, and I have to do it in a way that I'm proud of and pleased with. And, um, and I am, <laughs> but there is a big debt to deal with. Um, so in June of 2017, coming to face the music, um, I had a car payment, I had a credit card balance, a few thousand dollars, but at like 22% interest, oof. Um, and then my student loans. All together, all together, it was n around $95,000. And 87,000 of that were the student loans. <laughs> what? Um, so I looked around and realized I have to do this. I have to deal with this and I don't want it to take the rest of my life. There is no way, there's no acceptable 20 year plan. There's no acceptable 30 year plan. Like there's a five year plan. Like I was about to turn 35 and I decided this is not going beyond 40. This is done. This is, this. there's no way I'm dealing with this beyond 40. Um, I want other 40 year old problems, not student loans. Um, so I looked around and I realized I've got to do this. And I'm also, it was also a good time to face this because I was just about to start a one year contract working at a private middle school. Um, I got this great opportunity, just sort of 
my life transition and this school's needs just matched up at the right time. And so they needed somebody for one year to be their librarian. And I got to do it. And it was really, really fun. And it was also, um, and, and around June, July, I, I knew that the coming year was about to be the most lucrative year I'd ever had. Um, and still is the high point in my paid life. Um, and so I knew going forward, I'm about to make the most money I've ever made. I need to, I need to get smart about this. And so I moved to a cheaper apartment and I started figuring out how I can trim my own expenses. Like I used to pay over a hundred dollars for my phone. Um, no. So I asked my, pa my parents and my family and friends, like, what kind of phone plans exist out there? And I found one that works for me for what I need to do for 35. 35 is great compared to over 100. Um, and I've been happy with that ever since. So I just got a little more smart about live on less and use the rest for debt payment. Um, and all that year, I made... Um, let's see. I know I was paying on my student loans around $2,200 every month. And I was also paying a lot towards the credit card and paying a lot on the car. So that over that year, um, the credit card got paid off, the car got paid off. Um, and I had made a really good chunk of my debt disappear. It was awesome. It was great. Um, and it also really helped me to overcome that overwhelming feeling of how much student loan debt I had. I was just able to really work hard at just immediately, like lifestyle shift, get stuff taken care of. Um, it was good. I paid off around $30,000 of debt that year. Um, but it was just a one year contract. As good as it was, it was one year and I knew that going in. And so as the year was coming to a close, I started looking around a little bit, kind of half-heartedly. I kind of was looking around for another similar opportunity, but I didn't find one. Um, but I was really only looking half-heartedly because for several years I'd thought about moving to Idaho to be near my family. Um, and I think I just kind of, the pit of my stomach knew, I want to move. I'm ready to go there. And so I did. Um, in October of 2018, I moved here to Idaho and stayed with my folks for a few months. Um, it was October, November, December last year. Um, and looked for work right away. By the end of October, I had a job. Um, and that's because I just wanted a job. Like, I just wanted a job. I am not going to be a career track person probably ever again. Um, I've done that and there's a part of me that likes feeling so accomplished and professional, but um, it also was crushing me and I didn't, I don't really actually fit in that world. I don't want a career. I would like to just have jobs. Um, and now I have that, and I also get to do things like go cross-country skiing and live in a beautiful place. Um, it works really well for me. I love it here. Um, so the, the career changes have come with less income, but still not hopeless. Um, not hopeless at all. Because I think about, I have these habits now out of necessity. Uh, of, of keeping a good watch on how much I'm spending on myself and what's absolutely necessary um, and then paying off as much debt as possible. So if I can use 75% of my income to pay off debt, that means when I'm done, I can invest at that rate, I can save at that rate, I can do all kinds of things. Um, and that's, that's really exciting. Like I highly recommend, uh, trim your expenses and just see what you can start to accomplish. Um, this is a bit of a marathon yet. Um, I'm at the halfway point. You're getting to come in and see this story. The second half unfold, um, from $95,000 to $46,000 now. Um, and it's been 30 months. It's been 30 months, um, and at the pace I am at now, 
if nothing changed, it would take 30 more. But it's going to be faster than that because uh, even if I don't change jobs, my income will grow a little bit and I will continue to take side jobs. And so it's definitely not going to take 30 months. Maybe it'll only take 24. Maybe I could be done in two years. Maybe I can even do it quicker. I don't know. Um, so stick around to see how fast I can do this. Um, and that's exciting to me to just know that there is, there is light at the end of this tunnel. And no matter what size your debt is, and if your income is significantly smaller than the amount of debt you have, um, there is hope. There is hope. It takes some grit, but you can learn how to have that grit. Because I didn't have it before. I was so clueless. <laughs> I was so clueless. Um, yeah, it's not hopeless. And I hope that you find hope in people's stories. Because I was finding a lot of hope on YouTube and watching people talk about their debt and their debt journeys. Thank you to all of you. Um, next week I'm going to do an actual budget breakdown and show you like what does it cost to live where I live, what do I spend on groceries, um, and just kind of how this actually happens, that life can be this simple um, and you can, you can still be really excited about it. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you for listening and I will see you again in a week. <laughs>